Due to this being a serious topic, I want to add a disclaimer. Please do not post hateful comments in response to my trauma. This is mine and mine alone. Please note that names will be changed in this story to protect the identities of everyone involved. Trigger warnings for pedophilia, rape, child sexual assault, or CSA, childhood trauma, abuse, manipulation, gaslighting, molestation, and more. Please, viewer discretion is advised. Why am I making this video? Well, for once I feel welcome to talk about it on my channel. No one is stopping me. My mom isn't here anymore. The person I'm talking about is still alive, but isn't around me anymore. And people have been fairly supportive when it comes to me being a CSA and rape survivor. So you may be wondering, why do I specifically want to come out about this? <laughs> well, I felt really nervous at first, but due to the overwhelming support, I feel alright telling you all my story. It takes a lot of guts for people that have been in a similar situation to mine to come out about their trauma, and in some cases they get mocked for it, which is why a ton of us stay silent. Or we're forced to stay silent, at least. It's a hard subject to talk about, but I really hope I can explain myself in a comprehensive manner. When my mom was pregnant with me, my actual father left her due to not wanting to have a child. It, it broke her heart, and I think that's when she went into madness. When she was younger, according to my grandparents, she had a lot of weight problems and self-esteem issues. She wished she could be like other girls because she was more, um, quote-unquote, heavyset. She had weight issues all her life, and the reason I mention this is important for later. Back on topic, though, she was pregnant with me, and now I didn't have a father, or at least another person, to take care of me. She was low on money at the time, and instead of getting an abortion or adopting me out, she kept me and let my grandparents raise me for a while. It became so normal that I never wanted to leave my grandparents' house or their side at all. I wanted to stay, and I th think that hurt my mom even more, since she was dealing with extreme depression. I can tell that when she looked at me, she probably saw her ex-boyfriend that left her. Maybe that's why she was enraged at me sometimes. I have no idea, honestly. Fast forward, she eventually met a guy and I moved into a house that my mom rented out. They seemed quote-unquote happy together, but the truth is a lot darker than that. I never felt comfortable around this seemingly random man in our house. For this story, we'll call him Jerry. Jerry wasn't a very good man. He drank all the time. He smoked in the house, he demanded stuff out of my mother and me, and he talked shit about me to my grandparents. My grandparents, however, didn't like this man, obviously, and they didn't appreciate the way he treated me and my mom. He would often verbally and physically abuse my mom to the point where I've seen her cry while she was making a sandwich in the kitchen, crying on her bedside. And at one point, it was getting so toxic that my grandma had to come over and take us with her. The fighting eventually settled, but things went downhill from there. <sighs> at the start, it seemed normal. Even though he was my stepdad, he always gave me creepy looks. At this point, my little brother was slightly older, around five years old, maybe. And I even remember telling him that we probably shouldn't trust Jerry. My brother was confused, obviously. Um, he was my half-brother from my stepdad's side. But I c he couldn't- he couldn't tell that I was shaken up and nervous about him. My mom would always ignore my feelings of discomfort around my stepfather. She never once thought of it as a big deal, when she probably should have. Eventually, he found out about it, and he wasn't happy in the slightest. 
I don't remember much after that, but I remember being told that I was too sensitive and needed to shut my, and I quote, pretty little face before I regret it. I did as I was told, even though I would occasionally slip up and say something about him to my friends at school, although that was rare since I was a kid, and I actually believed that he would somehow find out, even if they had no contact with him whatsoever. I didn't want the school to find out because my mom said that DHS would take me away and then she told me and I quote, Is this what you want? To be taken away from me? Away from your grandparents? I knew she was using my grandparents so against me. She did that a lot just to make me stay with her. Even though I felt manipulated and confused, I just shut my pretty little mouth and said nothing. Things couldn't have gotten worse after I was practically disliked by my entire family besides my grandparents. Of course, they're huge sweethearts. I love them to death. I was wrong. <laughs> Honey. Eventually, my stepdad started to peek at me in the bathroom while I was taking a bath or shower. Jerry would comment on my body, pointing out its flaws, he'd call me a slut, and he eventually tried to wash me. I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what I was doing. Did it feel normal? No. Was it inappropriate? Yes. And this is where I get a little more graphic. He used that opportunity when bathing me touch me in various places and these weren't innocent touching either it was it wasn't hugs it wasn't forehead kisses it wasn't anything a father should be doing to his child he often called me a slut a whore and various other indefensible slang and my mother watched all of it happen i can't be certain whether or not she knew about him taking advantage of me but i'll go into that later my brother didn't know what to do, so he just stood by his dad. He was raised to be a spoiled little brat, always demanding shit from others, and even though he was my brother, I started to despise him because I would get blamed for stuff he did, and his biological dad, Jerry, would physically and sexually abuse me for it. He would touch me in various places. I was pinned against a wall once and forced to see things I never wanted to see. Jerry would tower over my bed at night sometimes. Other times he would peek at me in the bathroom. I do have another story that I know full details of. So, in our house we have two bathrooms. At least our old one. One doesn't have a shower, and the other one does. Got it? Got it. So I was taking a bath in the second bathroom that I mentioned, and when all of a sudden, Jerry barged in, saying he had to quote-unquote use the bathroom. <laughs> this made me incredibly uncomfortable, since I wasn't used to another person being in the bathroom with me during this time. But Jerry wasn't using the bathroom. He kept glancing at me every now and then, and he was making really strange noises, and I could see what he was doing. He was rubbing and jerking something. <sighs> Needless to say, I didn't like what was happening, and I couldn't consent to any of it. It was out of my control. Now, let me make this clear. This section has me being as blunt as possible. I was raped. If you feel uncomfortable with this subject, click off this now. I have went into molestation, but I know rape can be even more difficult for some people to listen to. This is your warning before I go into it. I'll give you a few seconds. So Jerry, 
He was abusive to his family, molested me, punished me for doing nothing, or for my little brother's actions. <laughs> and what does he do? As much as I will possibly regret that later on, I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> Jerry would oftentimes, rarely not, come by my room and watch me sleep. If I was awake or he saw me with my eyes open, he would always ominously tell me, go to sleep. And I would do as I was told. I didn't understand why he looked disappointed in me for being awake, but I know damn well now. I think it's going to become obvious for you all in a second, too. I would wake up with various bruises all over my body, even on my private parts. I was always weirded out because I could barely remember anything that happened in the night before I got them. I know now, however, that this is something my brain did to protect me from it. But the memories came back to me eventually, so didn't help that much now, did it? I kept seeing him at night, and I could eventually remember barely anything as I did as a kid. Up until my mom's divorce from him, I barely remember anything except the memories that stuck with me the most, which were bad ones. My grandma saw my bruises one night, and this is her testimony. And she asked where I got them from, but I had no clue. Either I didn't want to tell her, or my brain was hiding the severity of the situation from me. I can't even remember that, and that's the scary part. Jerry would wait until I was asleep, and then barge into my room and I was helpless to rape my six to nine year old body. <sighs> He would touch me inappropriately and tell me that I deserved it. That I deserved everything coming to me. He would force me to do all. He would force me to do these acts that I never wanted in the first place. And I thought the adults would save me like they did in the movies. But they didn't. No one came to save me. I used to look up to law enforcement and police officers and, and I realized quickly I couldn't depend on anyone, no matter who they were. DHS, better known as the Department of Human Services, got involved with my family when I was in my fifth year of grade school. Before I get into that, I was to dis I want to disclaim that Jerry and my mom were divorced at this point. I was happy about it, but my mom clearly wasn't. I ended up having a severe depression that lasted throughout fifth grade and my entirety of middle school. 6th through 8th grade. I was basically called the shy girl or the quiet kid a lot. Even my teachers found me abnormally quiet. Part of it was due to bullying, having barely any friends, and the other was from memories of Jerry that haunted me for the rest of my life. In 2020, I came out about how I was raped and molested by my stepfather to my grandmother and eventually my mom found out through her she ended up threatening to take away my phone and since she was extremely abusive i talked back to her and didn't care whether my phone got taken away or not if this was her reaction to be being raped then i didn't give a single fuck i lived at my grandparents place at this time so what could she do nothing <laughs> My grandparents understood me in ways she never did. I remember how disgusted she was with me, and the only reason I feel she wanted to go to the police and to file for me was because she wanted to get back at him for her own selfish reasons. Because at first, she didn't want me to say any of that stuff. But then, all of a sudden, she was so nice about it. 
It was all bullshit. I didn't fall for a single bit of it. But when she was in front of me with a recording, I couldn't just refuse to speak. I was forced to tell people everything. I was forced to tell them. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to explain what he had done to me. I was eventually, quote unquote, given help by going to something that, for this video, I'll just call Project Safe, which was a place people were taken to talk in a comfortable environment about their incidents that happened to them, and they could go into things. They could help you in court if you wanted them to, as well. However, since I wasn't ready and I didn't have much socializing experience, I had a hard time telling them everything. Luckily, they did have patience with me and were very kind people. They didn't force me to talk, but they obviously wanted me to go into detail when I could. However, even though I was having a good experience that was quickly shattered by my mom forcing me out and telling me to hurry up because she didn't want to be late for work. This is another reason why I don't believe she cared at all. Mom put me down the entire car ride home to my grandparents and vented her issues onto me. And I just had to sit there and take it. I kept apologizing over and over again, but it was never enough for her. She told me that I needed to grow up and start talking to people better. Really hurt. I was only in middle school when that was going on. She didn't understand. Now that she's gone, however, I guess I'll never know her intentions, why she did certain things, why she treated me like she did. I'll never know. But what I do know is that you shouldn't treat your kid that way. This video will never be monetized, like I even planned for that in the first place. I'll be leaving helplines down in the description of this video. If you need to reach out, please don't hesitate to call one of those numbers. Reach out to a professional or come out to those who you know you can trust. This video is serious and it barely scratches the surface of what happened, but due to YouTube censorship, I can't exactly go into detail. And even if I could, I fear people would be completely disgusted with me. Either way, I do hope this story touches somebody's heart and makes someone feel less alone. There were people that inspired me to come out about my experience, and I thank them more than ever. Thank you to Tom and Knops, Fizzy Cola Beat Boa, Alec Medeiros for ASMR, Gator Creation, Pookie Pops, and my boyfriend. Thank you all for supporting me. I really don't know what I'd do without all of you being there for me. Words can barely express how grateful I am. I love you all. When I first talked to you all, I was an extremely small channel, and I just wanted to thank you. You've done so much to help me, and I can't express to you how much it means that you're still here. I love all of you. Thank you for making my life a happier one.